with Bronny, I just I want to clarify one thing you just said, which is Rob and, and, and I did not give Bronny anything. Bronny has earned this. I know a lot of people have already posted their takes on J.J. Reddick capping for Bronny James during the uh, draft press conference for the Lakers. And they've covered things like, you know, this was over the top, talking about nepotism, saying, why can't you just admit what's happening? You know, it's obvious what's happening. Obviously criticizing the very words J.J. said about whether or not Bronny James earned this. But I'm happy to say that there's still something that no one else has said. This was triggered, in my mind, by the fact that J.J. Reddick, in all of these sound bites I was hearing, was starting right from addressing a reporter. With Bronny, I just I want to clarify one thing you just said, which is Rob and, and, and I did not give Bronny anything. Bronny has earned this which made it seem like he was responding to something that the reporter said that deserved a defensive response, like an accusation that this was given to Bronny or a question about, hey, how does it feel now that Bronny has been given this? No one mentioned that at all. And the reason the alarm went off in my head is it's suspicious no matter which side you're on. I, I try to hold some integrity when I criticize people. I at least don't use fake evidence, which LeBron fans are notorious for being happy to adopt fake evidence before they've even attempted at all to verify the, the evidence. So whether it's someone that I support or that I don't like, when somebody's soundbite is taken out of context, I want to go back and hear what the actual press conference was talking about. Yes, I'm saying I would have actually set the record straight, even if that meant defending J.J. Reddick, because something seemed off here. And I went back and I listened from the moment that Palinka introduced the press conference through the first questions and the first responses, and then J.J. starting up talking about how great Bronny was. Dalton, if we could start with you, uh, we got to see your reaction up on the stage and, and kind of go through that moment. What have these last couple of days been like for you? And, and then to follow up with Bronny, uh, just that, that moment, right, where you get the phone call and then you hear your name. Can you take us through the emotions of all of that and what you were feeling and then how you've been feeling the last couple of days since? Yeah, everything's just been... Yeah. Bronny, Jim Hill, KKL9, what have been some of the preliminary conversations you've had with your father about what's expected in the NBA and, and, and what you can expect to, to hear and see once you start playing. Um, JJ, first for you, um, going through your first draft, what did you like about Dalton and, and Bronny and um, what was it like having them be the first two players that you were able to help select? I listened to it multiple times. Nobody, nobody said what JJ is pretending to be countering. With Bronny, I just, I want to clarify one thing you just said. I want to respond to what you said just now. I went back. Nope. He did not say it. He didn't mention Bronny being given anything. <laughs> what are you talking about, JJ? <laughs> what world are you living in? And and by the way, Rob Polinka, his int introductory speech, he sounds like a trained monkey, some sort of imprisoned animal. Welcome, everybody. This is a, a day to be incredibly grateful for um, and incredibly excited about. That is losing the will to live, but carrying out orders. I mean, he sounded like a zombie. Good God. What was that, Rob Palenka? You poor thing. <laughs> you... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it's your own fault, but you poor thing. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a trained monkey, any sort of a prisoner, a circus animal, a zoo animal, a pet, something that spent its life doing tricks for the owner only to still receive no 
reward and realize that your life is meaningless. <laughs> Jeez, that was dark. <laughs> I will upload the entire first part of that uh, press conference leading up to JJ's response and including that in an unlisted video because I don't want to waste my subscribers time posting about publishing that but here I'm linking it below for your reference you can go back and listen for yourself listen as many times as you want to everybody was so concerned with debating whether or not JJ was right that Bronny earned anything didn't even stop to think about the fact that the entire conversation the entire conversation is BS no one asked no one asked the question that you answered that makes JJ's behavior just despicable because he's pretending to be brave he's pretending like he's coming to the aid of someone who was attacked when no one attacked him this is just JJ trying to get in good with LeBron Please consider how cowardly today's journalists are, you know, to pretend that one of them challenged J.J. Reddick in a Lakers press conference is absurd in itself. They are there to suck ass, and that is all. I haven't heard a challenging question since I can remember. You know, the Lakers are either their own worst nightmare, their own worst enemy, or this is part of the plan. Because you could let the Bronny James criticism die if you'd shut up. You know, people are taking a go. And most people feel bad that Bronny's caught in the middle of it. But can you shut up? Nobody criticized Bronny during this press conference. No one asked you to defend giving him this. And by the way, most people, even when they earn an opportunity, say, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Even then, J.J. Reddick wouldn't have had a point. Most people, when they're about to engage in a great chapter of their lives and are about to make a lot of money doing exactly what they wanted to do for a living, say thank you. They say thank you for this opportunity. So, acting defensive. Even if someone had said the Lakers gave him this opportunity is a sign of insecurity. It's a sign that you know this is bullshit. Even then it would have been an unnecessary defense of an argument that didn't exist. But it, it gets worse because no one even said anything defensible. There's no reason for J.J. Redick to go on the defensive here. None. Please tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know how many times I can stand to listen to this. JJ is hearing accusations that never happened. That shows where his brain is at. He sounds like a guy with a small dick that walks around the room telling everyone how big his dick is. And by the end of the day, everyone knows that he has the smallest dick there. I didn't hear anything. JJ Reddick pretended that he responded directly to something the journalist said. Not that I can hear. Anyway, let me know.